Next, I want to summarize the structure of atoms, which has been found by experiment. In the first experiment, the gas discharge tube experiment, a gas sample was broken apart into a positive particle called an ion and a negative particle called an electron. J.J. Thompson found the ratio of mass to charge of that negative electron and in the third experiment Millikan was able to calculate both the mass and the charge of the electron. A fourth experiment by Rutherford, the gold foil experiment, involved shooting a relatively heavy alpha particle at a very thin layer of gold foil. Now the expected result was that these alpha particles would pass through the gold foil represented by the two black arrows on the right and most of the alpha particles did exactly that but some of the alpha particles the runs represented by the red arrow deflected off at a certain angle and the most remarkable part about the experiment was the small number represented by the blue arrow of alpha particles that hit that thin gold foil and bounced almost straight back where they came from. What this experiment showed was every atom contains a very small nucleus and that nucleus has a positive charge and that nucleus contains most of the mass of the atom. And also that the electrons are not inside the nucleus but the electrons rather are on the outside of the nucleus. We now know more detail about the particles that make up an atom. We know the most important particles in chemistry are protons, neutrons, and electrons. A proton is represented by P with a positive sign because it has a positive one charge. A neutron is electrically neutral, and an electron, E negative, has a negative one charge. An atom starts off electrically neutral so that means the number of positive charges has to equal the number of negative charges. The number of positive charges, the number of protons, is given by the symbol Z which is called the atomic number. And the periodic table is arranged by increasing atomic number. So the first element listed hydrogen has one proton. If you follow through the next element listed, helium, has two protons, etc. Most elements contain, are made up, rather, of different isotopes, which means they have the same atomic number Z, but they contain a different number of neutrons. So, for example, Carbon exists in three isotopic forms, carbon-14, carbon-13, and carbon-12. The 14, 13, and 12 refer to the mass number, which is abbreviated with a capital A. And the mass number is the sum of the protons and the neutrons, the two heavy components of the atom. And we can write an isotope in a nuclide symbol that contains the symbol from the periodic table, such as capital C for carbon, the atomic number, Z, the number of protons, and the mass number A, 14. So if the mass number is 14 and we know that carbon contains six protons, that's what makes a carbon atom a carbon atom, then this isotope must contain eight neutrons.